<laughs> All right, it's six o'clock, and uh, just a couple on Zoom tonight thus far, but uh, we've got our group on Facebook and YouTube. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. What happened to it? I have no idea. Did you just lose it altogether? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, let's it's go before the Lord, and maybe we'll get a bunch of our technical difficulties straightened out. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to get together with the family. And Lord, we long for the time that we can all be back in the building together and set together and still be online for those that can't be here. But Lord, we miss being together with those that, that mm -hmm. join with us. And we like to lift our hearts up in prayer. And we like to lift our hearts up in song to you. And Lord, we like to laugh together and we like to share our hearts together when we're together. And we know as a father, you love it when your children come together and play well. And Lord, it's a good thing when brethren dwell together in unity. Tonight we come to you fragmented all over the internet. And we thank you, Lord, that some we can see, others that we can, we can communicate with and write back and forth. And Lord, I pray that you'll cause us to feel a spirit of unity now and recognize that we are one in the spirit and we're one in you. And we open up your word and we ask you, Lord, to reveal things to us that we've never seen. Not just so we can see something new. It's not new. It's just things we haven't seen. But Lord, we want to find these things that are new to us so that we can apply them and be closer to you. Grow us, Lord. We want to be closer. We want to know you. We want to recognize and hear your voice better so that we can obey better. And as we obey, Lord, you promised to reveal yourself to us. And we take you up on that now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 John 14, 21. That's what I was referring to there. It just came to me in my prayer. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen to this. Uh, we've talked about it before. John 14 is, uh, this is a powerful chapter of Scripture. John 14 and John 17 are a couple of the, my favorites just uh, because they're so full. Of, John 17 is Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. And that'll, you can read that a hundred times and not get the same thing out of it. God will touch you each time you read it. But in 14, if you remember, that's where he started off. You hear it a lot of time at funerals. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house, many mansions, and such as that. And then further down, he, Philip says, well, just show us the Father and we'll be fine. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then further down, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No one comes to the Father but by me. All in chapter 14. And I'm reading along some time back, and I came to verse 21. Uh, he starts at 15, and he's talking about don't just learn, don't read the Word of God, don't just read it, and don't just see the things that you need to apply in your life, but be diligent about doing them. Obey Him. Mm -hmm. Obey, obey, obey. Every time, mm -hmm. The harder ones. It's easy to obey the things that are easy. But the things that are saying, man, that's just not me. I don't know if I can do that. Fall before the Lord and say, help me to do it. Help me to do it. Give me the boldness to do it. Give me the courage to do what you said to do here, Lord. Or give me the courage to stop doing what you said. Why? Because obedience is everything in this life. Yep. Obedience is everything in this life. As a child, as you're growing up, if you don't learn to obey mm. your parents, you're not going to have a good life. You're not right. going to have a good relationship with them. It won't last real long either. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you wouldn't uh, around my house. Well, I mean, <clears throat> you know, obedience, to, your parents say don't run out into the middle of the street. That's right. You know? Well, mine yeah. said you could play out there if you wanted to. Just <laughs> come home before dark. <laughs> but, but at any rate, if you obey, and if you obey the Father, listen to what Jesus said right here in, in verse 21 of chapter 14. Then we'll get to our Samuel. But he says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And you remember John told us the same thing there. If you love God, you'll keep his commandments. But Jesus himself here in the red letter says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Just by keeping the commandments, it shows you love Jesus. And if you love Jesus, it says the Father will love you. And then listen to the catch here. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I, Jesus, I will love you and I will manifest myself to you. Mm, I love it. That literally means I will show you myself. Mm -hmm. I will expose myself to you. Mm -hmm. That is literal, not with your physical eyes. If he ever chooses to do that, what an awesome 
privilege you've experienced. That's what the Apostle Paul experienced. There are people in the third world countries, uh, mm -hmm. Muslims that are experiencing that, that are seeing Jesus and being converted. But Jesus is talking about revealing himself to you. The more he reveals himself to you, you recognize who Jesus is. And suddenly you, this Jesus that you've always read about, the gentle man who walked in the sandals and the robe and the long flowing hair and blue eyes, <laughs> and you have this image in the baby Jesus, you start to realize the tenderness of the man who reached out to the woman at the well. Yeah. The, the gentleness, I touched on these this morning, the woman caught in adultery and how they all thought, he's got a stoner, he's got a stoner, he's so much behind the law, he's got a stoner. And Jesus said, sinless, you throw the first stone, stoner, get mm -hmm. after it. But mm -hmm. you were that, and it blew him away. And then how he so gently said, where are those that accuse you? And the more you do what he says, the more you start to see the personality, the person, the persona of who Jesus is. And you should know by now, most of you who are, if you're listening to this Bible study, you've experienced this to some degree. You should know by now that the more you experience who he is and actually learn who Jesus is, it changes you. Okay. And it causes you to, all you want is to be more like him mm -hmm. and you become more conformed to him. So if you want to be more like Jesus, do what he said. And when you do what he said, he reveals himself to you. And when he reveals himself to you, all you want is to be more like him. Mm -hmm. yes, and then we yes. have to round it out with our First John 3, 2 that I use over and over and over. Beloved, now we mm -hmm. are the sons and daughters of God. It does not yet appear what we should be, but we know when he appears, we're going to be like, like him. him. So let's get after it tonight. Let's start becoming like him tonight. Yeah. And we're going to go back a little over 3,000 years Hmm. and hear a lesson that we can still apply today. Now, if you remember last week, King David has, uh, he's not only, he's been now the king of Judah for about seven years, and now he's just taken over and he's the king of Israel as well, and he's got that all under hand, and he's got the blessings of the people, and he's found through a couple of things that happened, he's got the blessing of God. These other, this other king from another country, I don't remember which one it was, came and built him a big, beautiful palace. Mm. And he said, wow, surely God's hand is... And it wasn't just because, wow, he built me this, God must have... No, he knew. You know, it's like those things that happen. You can have something happen in your life, and you know, you know that God has done something for you. And you also know, if you go share it at the water cooler, some of your workmates might say, yeah, well, that, that's real neat. Yeah. That's real neat, Terry. But that's they think that you, just happened. But, yeah. but you know better. Yeah. And they can tell you all day long is a coincidence, but you know God has done something. Well, David knew that God had anointed him. And that's where he was as we ended this last... Well, as, as we went into chapter uh, 6, that's where he was. And as we come out of 6, with his his recognizing that I am, I am now the anointed king of all of this territory. Everything... He knows the history. Everything that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's now made me king over. I was a shepherd boy, and we'll get into that tonight. I was nothing but a shepherd boy in a poor mm -hmm. family, and now I'm king over all of this great land that God promised to Father Abraham. And as he sees that, he says, notice, he started last week, he said, we gotta get the Ark of the Covenant. We've got to get it back and bring it here into the kingdom. We've got to get it back where it's reverenced again, the ark. And so if you remember last week, he takes the ark and he puts it on a new cart and he has the oxen pulling it and uh, it hits a bump and Uzziah reaches out to touch it and dies immediately because he touched the ark and David freaks out. Because David, follow this because it's going to tie right into tonight. David was really... I don't know how to, a better way to put this than our kids would say today, but David really had his feels on with God right now. He was knowing, he was sensing that God was favoring him. And if you've ever felt that, you know it makes you want to just keep chasing and keep chasing, getting closer and closer. When you know, I talk to you a lot of times about praying through. It's not praying until God says yes or no. It's getting on your knees and praying until you know he's yep. heard you. Right. And when he does something in your heart or something mm. around you and you recognize <laughs> the Almighty has mm. reached through time and space and let you know that he heard you, it does something to you. It does. Well, that's what David had just mm -hmm. encountered, and he said, I'm going to bring the ark back. That will, that will please God. David's reaching out to please God. And there's a lot of lesson in that. You can always want to have his favor, but the best way to please God, anybody know? 
Charles mm-hmm. Stanley would use this one. Mm-hmm. Best way to please God is just obey Him. Right. Don't come up with your own ideas to try to please God. Let just God show yeah. you and just do what He says. Mm-hmm. That's how you show, and that's how you show your love back to God. Obedience, always obedience. It's good. So David goes for the ark, but he didn't do it the way God said to do it. That's why Uzziah died when he reached out and touched. You're not supposed to do that. One, it was never supposed to have been on that cart. Mm-hmm. You transport the ark, if you remember back in Leviticus, I guess it was, or possibly in Deuteronomy, I think Leviticus, where the ark of the covenant's made and, and it has little holes on the side of it and they run poles through those holes and then men, Levites, take hold of it and they carry it over their shoulders. Wasn't it Exodus? Was it not Exodus when they were coming out of Egypt? Did they not take the, the ark with them as they came out of Egypt? I don't remember. I don't know that they had the ark yet. Oh, they may have. Maybe. I, I, I was saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been January since we did all that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But anyway, he's trying to bring the ark back the wrong way. Yeah. Cost yeah. a man his life. And, and here's what happened. If you remember, it freaked David out, and he was afraid. And so he was trying to reach out to God. He was trying to reach out to God. It's like he put strange fire on the altar. Mm. When you're reaching out to God and you're reaching out to God, you can do it the wrong way, and you can get yourself slapped. Mm-hmm. That's why we've got to know the Word of God. Because as mm-hmm. I've said so many times, God is a God of order. He will do amazing and miraculous things in your life, and He'll expose and reveal Himself to you, but you're going to do it His way, not yours. Mm -hmm. Or He'll back you up. Well, David caught on to that, and and when this happened, and Uzziah died, David says, send the ark. Send it to Obed-Edom's house. He's a righteous man, and I don't want it coming into town yet. I don't know what God's doing. He just killed somebody, killed one of my men. God, is he angry at me? Is he mad? Did I do something wrong? So he sends the ark to this man's house, Word comes back in a couple of months, everything Obed- mm. or Obed-Edom touches turns to gold. Yep. He's, he's just blessed beyond measure because the ark's there. And David knew it. He's like, mm-hmm. something, I don't get it. I don't get it. I know I'm supposed to bring the ark. I brought the ark, got it almost here, and a man got killed for touching it. Yeah. So I'm afraid, and I send it to Obed-Edom's house. Now everything he touches turns to gold. What? That should be happening here. What's going on? So David says, okay. Go to Obed-Edom's house and get mm-hmm. the ark. But before you get it, call me the priest in here. So he called the priest and he says, I want to get that ark. What do I need to do? And now, don't you know, if you know some of these stories at all, don't you know when he, when he asked the priest, don't you know some of them, now they're careful talking to the king, but don't you know some of them thought, wonder why he didn't ask us this the first time. Mm-hmm. A new cart. Or as Jr. says, put it in an Escalade, <laughs> the nicest car you could get. He, he's going to show God how, how much he favors him. Don't do it like that. Do it the way God said. And the priest said, it's only supposed to be transported one way. So David said, do it the way the Word says. They went and got it and brought it in. And God danced before it. As you remember when we ended last week, his first wife, Michal, despised him because he had... David danced. Uh-huh. Okay, you say God danced. Well, God may have been dancing, too. I don't know if God dances or not. But David danced. Yeah. And uh, Mikhail despised him because he apparently pulled a bunch of his clothes off dancing and stuff. I hadn't done that in two weeks. But uh, anyway, Stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, he comes in, and he, um, he's got the ark back into its place. And, and we'll pick up now after he has his little spat with Mikhail, which we've already touched on that enough. Mm-hmm. Let's start at chapter 7 and notice what happens here because it, it, this dovetails perfectly in. Ver, chapter 7, verse 1, 2 Samuel. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, talking about David, when he sat in the house and the Lord had given him rest round mm-hmm. about from all his enemies... That the king said to Nathan, or to Nathan, that was his prophet, like a confidant and a man that 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 was go between to the Lord with him. It may have been Nathan yeah. that told him how to handle the ark to bring it in. I'm not sure, but the king said to Nathan, the prophet, "See now, I dwell in a house of cedar." And what he's saying here, read it, and you'll see what he's saying. It's, it's I'm adding words to it, but just you'll understand what he's saying. He says, "Look at this. I'm living." in this beautiful house. Mm -hmm. I'm now king, and God's given us rest with all our enemies, and look how I'm living. Look at this house. And he says, and yet the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Mm. Isn't it funny? David thought that was a bad thing. I have a cedar house. 
and lim mm. it smells good and it's beautiful and there's gold and there's silver and there's brass everywhere and it's it rains and it runs right off of my roof just like it's supposed to I've got a beautiful home and the ark of God is out there in a tent mm -hmm. is what it was yep. so Nathan looks at him and Nathan's all amped up and he's Ooh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah David I hear where you're coming from and Nathan said to the king go do all that's in your heart for the Lord is with thee so basically um, David is saying, I want to build a big, beautiful place to put the ark and a big, beautiful place for God to reside because look at my house and look out there at the tent. Nathan's like, that makes sense to me. See, even Nathan, the prophet of the Lord, was caught up in the presence of David because David was a man after God's own heart. And Nathan, who always should have gone to the Lord first, hears David and says, that makes good sense. Do everything in your mm -hmm. heart. Well, it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Mm -hmm. Nathan goes back home and God's like, uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, aren't you supposed to be my mouthpiece to the king? Aren't you supposed to speak my words to the king? He says, go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, shalt thou build me a house to dwell in? God says, are, are you mm -hmm. going to build a house for me? Mm -hmm. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. God's replaying this. Now he's talking. Keep this in order. God is speaking to Nathan, and Nathan is to take this word to David. And God says to Nathan, ask David, all this time since the children of Israel came out of Egypt, have I ever dwelt in a house? And it's almost like he's saying, have you ever heard me complain? I am God. I am the creator. I'm the almighty. I don't need your house. I don't need, I don't need, we miss this. Look at, look at our churches today. Mm. If you've listened to me preach very much, you know that sometimes, and I've been to some beautiful churches and I used to love going to them. And anymore, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on it. It's just, it's a common thing all the way back to Constantine when he legalized Christianity and said, tax-free, build big, beautiful shrines to your God because he was caught up and he wanted to do like David. He wanted to do good. But we've got multi-million dollar churches and sometimes mm. they're not a mile from neighborhoods where people are starving right. and hungry. That's not God saying, I don't, I don't mm. dwell in there. I dwell in your heart. Mm. And we have stages where concerts are put on to lead worship that are as nice as Spirit Arena in Lubbock or Reunion Arena in Dallas. Yeah. It depends on the city you're in. And I love it too. I enjoy listening to the entertainment. But that's that's not where God dwells. Right. God dwells right there in you. Mm -hmm. right. right in you. And if you'll allow that, if you'll open it up, he said, God says, I went in tents and tabernacles when the children of Israel came out. Listen, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, remember that story? They would have had nothing had God not put favor in the Egyptians' eyes, and the Egyptians just gave them everything they had here. This looks like it fits you. Here, take it. Here, you want my watch? Take this. And they gave them gold and silver, and they mm -hmm. sent them out. And here's all these slaves with riches. They didn't even know what to do with it. And what they did, they got out in the desert, and they melted it down and made a golden calf and worshipped it. Yeah. Eh, really? We're not meant for this kind of stuff. This is not our home. Mm. This gold that everybody fights over and trades here you're going to pave the streets in heaven. Mm. And it's not even this. It's transparent when we get to heaven. So God says, you're missing the point, Nathan. Tell him he's missing the point. I, I see his heart. He loves me. David is a man after my heart. And he wants to do this big, beautiful, noble thing. And most preachers and most building committees at churches, they're not doing It's not like they're sinful and they're wicked and they're blowing all this money, which sometimes they're blowing a lot of money. But they're thinking, I want to do a place. I want to glorify God. Mm. I want music and speakers and videos and, and, and comfort and, mm. and to the glory of God. And they mean well, just like David did. Mm -hmm. To draw people in. To draw people so. in and to bring glory to God. And I mean, yeah. if the heathen can have a place like that, then look what the children of God can do. And God says, mm. in some cases, God says, I know you mean well. <laughs> it's as if God telling Nathan, go tell David, that doesn't do it for me. Mm -hmm. That's not what does it for me. 
He says, I've walked in a tent and in a tabernacle all this time. Verse 7, In all the places wherein I have walked with the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, and said, Why build ye not a house of cedar for me? Did you get that? That's It's worded King James. It's kind of beautiful. But listen to that again. Verse 7, In all the places wherein I have walked with the children of Israel, God walks with you. Mm -hmm. Listen to the intimacy in what God just spoke there. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? God said, I never asked for this. I never. Right. I, that's not what matters to me. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat. That's, I took you out of the pastures, son. Mm -hmm. What I saw in you wasn't potential to be a mighty man with multiple wives and gold and silver. He said back in Deuteronomy 17, 17, don't do that. And David did it anyway, and Saul did it worse. But they had a heart for God. God looks past something. He doesn't, he doesn't wink at sin by any means. And now we have the Holy Spirit in us. We're not to live like that. But he's looking at your heart. And sometimes we do stupid things. Mm. Sometimes we do stupid things that bring dis shame and dishonor to God. But God looks at us and he says, mm. <laughs> they mean well. Mm -hmm. They love me and they're trying. But if they would just spend, I gave, I gave you specifically two ears and one mouth so you would listen to me twice as much as you pray to me. Mm. If you would just listen to me more. But he knows that you're trying and, and that he loves you. And he's doing this right now. That's what he's doing with David. Now therefore, so shall thou say to my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following sheep, to be a ruler over my people Israel. You were following sheep, and now I'm going to make you the king of all my people, all the way back to Father Abraham. And I was there, I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentst, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. He said, David, there's nobody on this earth. You've heard of all these kings and queens all over the world as you've grown up and you fought against the Philistines and you admired King Saul when he was trying to kill you because you saw my hand was on him. And now I've given you a name like unto their name and God didn't release it here, but and you're my favorite. He'll say it a little bit later on. You're from where I'm going to spring forward, my son. And my son is where you came from. That's a, that's a weird little thing there, dichotomy. Verse 10, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more before time. And I wonder how much of this is actually talking about the millennium. When God was speaking, it doesn't matter if that's another thousand, two, three, four, five thousand years away from now, or if it's next month that the millennium should start. We don't know. To God, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. That's and true. as God speaks of a millennium, I'm telling you, there's one coming. And there's coming a time that Jesus Christ will rule as a literal king on this earth, and there will be instant judgment all mm -hmm. over the world. And the children of Israel will be brought into their home, and they will have no enemies coming against them. They will be God's people. He spoke it, and you can take it to the bank. It's yeah. going to happen. That's right. And I wonder but what that's some kind of what God's speaking about here, because He started this. He started the people in David, and He started the kings. He started the people in Abraham, but He started the kingship in David. Mm -hmm. Verse eleven. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Oh, and that was interesting. If you remember reading in Judges, that was a difficult time. They didn't have a king. God wanted, to, God wanted to lead his people. He wants to lead us not with a king, not with a president, mm. not with a, a mm. big religious leader. He mm. wants to lead his people himself with judges. Right, and the king of kings. The leader. king of the, kings is yes, our leader, and, he and, and he speaks down, yeah. and he puts people over us, and he gives pastors, mm -hmm. and he gives teachers and ministers, and, and they're, they're just like judges along the way to help you determine right and wrong until you get it clearly in your own heart, right. but not kings. And he mm -hmm. says, As since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, 
Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to establish you. You're wanting to build me a house out of stone and wood and such as that. God saying, I'm going to build a house out of you. Yeah. And I'm going to raise my son up out of your line. This is mm -hmm. just says this is so much prophecy written into this as well. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy father. Now, David, after you die, when you finish, when your days be fulfilled, I read that and it almost mm -hmm. set me back for just a minute. And I thought, we look at death so funny. And in the New Testament, we, as New Testament believers, we, we need to take literal hold of the things that Paul taught us when he said, for me to live is Christ, to mm -hmm. die is gain. Right. Uh, when he says, grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Paul said when he was telling Timothy he was about to be put to death, he says, I finish. I'm going home. I'm going to my reward. Guys, don't you want that? Yeah. That's what we should be seeking is to walk in a walk every moment of every day with our hearts in tune with the Holy Spirit so that our thoughts are about being home. If something happens to old Terry and the bread truck hits me, you better know I'm glad. I'm happy. I'm finished here. Mm -hmm. I'll miss you guys, and I'll especially miss this one, but it will be no time. There will be no time at all. Right. I told Sally if something like that were to happen, don't grieve over me for more than 10 or 12 years and then go on about your life yeah. and just let it go. <laughs> I can't hear the laughter. I know. Vicky's laughing. But here he's, <laughs> he's saying here, when your days be fulfilled. You see, when you talk with God and you have a prophet that talks to you, that's, David had that. Most people didn't then. Right. Just the prophets, some of the priests. Today, that's all of us. Every one of us should look at when God t speaks of our day, whether it's COVID two months from now, or whether it's, it's dying an old death 40 years from now, or, or whatever it is, our days are fulfilled. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Oh, death, mm -hmm. where's your sting? Yeah. I'm not worried about it. That's, that's my transition. But as we said before, I want to do everything I need to do while I'm here. Yeah, I want to be able to um, to know that I'm doing the will of God to my very last breath. That's that's just what I said. That's exactly yeah. What? Well, you said that. I said I want to know mm -hmm. that I've done everything I'm supposed to yeah. do while I'm here. Yes. And that's our that's yeah. see, that's our do goal. The will of God. Yes. Is to know each day. Yeah. When we come home and we get comfortable and finally get our shoes off and we kick back and maybe we get our Bible out or we get a good preacher on TV and we're relaxing and that phone rings. It's mm -hmm. time to go somewhere and you got to go minister to somebody. Yeah. That first still the flesh says, but almost immediately the Spirit says, wait, wait, wait. This is what you need to do. That's right. What if you don't see tomorrow and the sun come up, you'll know that you got this taken care of because I asked you to do it. Yeah. We are His salt. We are His light. And when mm -hmm. we can start to get our mindset that way and live that way, Fear of death is gone. And the Bible teaches in Hebrews that's the fundamental fear mm -hmm. of man. And when you get that whipped, and yeah. that's what Jesus showed us. He came back out of the grave. He says, you don't have to fear this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fear this anymore. You realize if we're not here for the for the, for the rapture, which everybody that's come before us wasn't, we, we're all thinking we may be going to see it. But if we don't, do you realize the same thing? you got to look at this. The same thing is going to happen to you and to me that happened to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're going to come right up out of that grave. Right. Just yeah. like he did. Mm -hmm. Only right. difference is it wasn't three days. And time ends when you die. Time ends when we get to heaven. So right. it may be just as though you died and three days later you come right, right. back out of that grave. Right. Yep. We're going to have time this. Warp. It, it, I think that it is too. But whether it is or not, without getting into the sci-fi of it, unless Christ raptures mm -hmm. us, Every one of us are going to experience the exact same thing Jesus did. Mm -hmm. We're going to die in this flesh, and we're going to come right back to life. So mm -hmm. do it with fear. Amen. Well, Terry, that sounds a little strange. It does, don't it? Mm -hmm. But ask That's God to reveal says. it to you through the Word, and you'll start to see, not afraid of this anymore. And I'm going to tell you something. That devil who's beat up on you all your life, and that devil who tried to take you out three or four times when you were younger, and that devil who's still got his claws in some of your family, you start to turn the tables on him. When you get rid of the fear of death, yeah. you start fighting like a man or a woman, oh, whatever the case mm -hmm. is. But you start fighting without fear, and you learn how to fight in the Spirit. It's Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How do you stay yeah. on point when there's that much in these words? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Verse 12. Diane Doherty says it's all God's timing, and that's right, Diane. Sweet Granny. I think yes. that she's kind of got the handle on this, too. And mm -hmm. uh, it's Love you. Yeah, she when her sweet husband mm -hmm. went home, that had to have been a, a huge blow. They were together for so long oh, yeah. and, and so in love with one another, and yet her blessed hope. The blessed hope is what we have. Yes, and she knows. She knows yes. where he is. She knows where she's going. Yeah. And you come to a certain point, and we don't want to wait until we're so old that we just have to face the fact. Let's look at it now and say, You're Death, now. where's mm -hmm. your sting? Mm. Lord, get me over this fear of death because mm. you might. There's again where we may be looking at. We don't know where this country's headed. We don't know where this world's headed. If we're here during the beginning of the tribulation or in the last days, there's going to be some suffering going on among the Christians. Well, I want to know now that I'm not going to turn back. I want to know now that my resolve is there, and that's only done by the Holy Spirit being that's in you. True. The verse 12, he says, that's a neat way to talk about it. Not mm -hmm. when you die, mm -hmm. or did you hear Terry was on that last list. He's gone now. You can say his days were fulfilled. Amen. Just like verse Amen. 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou mm -hmm. shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. I like to think that he was talking about Jesus coming up there, but Jesus was before David. He's talking about Solomon, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he says, because he says, he mm -hmm. shall build a house for my name. And see, Jesus will too, though. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm not teaching this. I'm just saying, consider these things. Because it looks like he's talking about Solomon, but you can also place Jesus in there. Because God had... He does so many things over and over and over through history with different shells, different mm -hmm. boxes. And if you look a little deeper into it with your spirit, you'll say, you know, this is just like Jesus all the way through. And it was 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. 4, 000, he's Jesus is all through here. Yeah. So he says, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, that I shall establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men, but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Now that hit me as I was reading it today. I don't think that I've ever landed on that or noticed it before. But I've heard people talk about, and this is, this is just for you to think on. This isn't something to try to dig up or get an opinion to argue with people about. So much of this, I'm not trying to teach you things. I'm trying to stimulate your mind to go before the Lord and let him show you things. But here... I've heard people say, do you think Saul went to heaven or do you think he went to hell? And I don't know. I, I know that God anointed him. I also know that it says that God took the spirit out of him and sent an evil spirit to torment him. Well, that sounds like pretty bad. But at the same time, he's noticed right here, he said of, of, of establishing David's family, he says, I will be his father and he's speaking here specifically about, about Solomon coming up and the, and the future kings after him. And he will be my son. And if he commits iniquity, I will chase him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy will not depart away from him. He did sin. Mm -hmm. Solomon was a rascal before he died. Yeah. I mean, he, he did some things that were just horrible. He had nearly a thousand women in his mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. uh, wives and concubines all over the place and children all over the place. Didn't know who was who. He wrote Ecclesiastes and in places it sounded like he was just in the height of depression because he sought God in all of these things. But it says right there that my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul whom I put away right in front of you. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Ask yourself, is it today Mm -hmm. Is is Israel still got the king and, and, and the, the, the line of David running through it? The promise is still there. Mm -hmm. We don't see it right now because there's so much disobedience. And yet, at the same time, Israel right now, if you look at it, there. <laughs> this sounds bad, but Israel's as bad as America right now. It is. So they have just ways. as much abortion. They have just as much homosexuality. Mm -hmm. They have they some of the things they do. It just and yet they don't even acknowledge Jesus as the Lord. Exactly. However, however, these precious, special, beloved people of God, mm -hmm. in almost in our lifetime, in our parents' lifetime, 
God fulfilled one of the oldest prophecies in the Word. He gathered them from all over the world and brought them back and gave them their land in 48. Yes. <laughs> that should make anybody's yeah. skin crawl. And that six-day war. And the six-day war where it's just like in the Bible yes. where God came in yeah. and defeated enemies seven, eight times yeah. bigger than, than the children of God were. Right. He right. did that right in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. Our, our well, parents' eyes. Our parents' eyes because we were too young. But that's, And then us, while we're here, mm -hmm. just in the last four years, we watched the capital go right back into Jerusalem, which they're talking about moving back now. But whatever happens there, we're, we don't know what's happening, but God is moving things around just like it says in this book. Yeah. Yep. They're not walking under the Messiah. They don't recognize the Messiah, but it says they won't. They're stiff-necked people. Guess what? So are we. <laughs> but there's they, just so many things to think about. This book is so alive. There is no way anybody can learn this whole book and, and try to go. There's so many things I would never even venture to teach you because I don't know that I know something to teach you along those lines. I want to get you thinking about it and let the author teach you because he'll show you things. I have things in this that I believe, that I've seen, that I'm living my life by because he's given me revelation, but he might show you differently. So I'm not going to tell you this is how it is. That's why I'm not going to tell you once saved, always saved. I'm not going to tell you it's the opposite. I'm not going to tell you there's a pre-trib rapture or a mid or a... Don't argue over those things. The, the point yeah. is always be ready. And mm -hmm. somebody, there are hierarchies and high theologians in each one of these doctrines that will argue to the death over what they believe. And only one of them going to be right. And someday they're all going to stand before God. And I just say, even if they're saved, I can see God saying, why'd you say that? Why'd you teach everybody that? Mm -hmm. You know, you caused a bunch of these to stumble and, and think that I was going to do this. And that was never in my plan. Yeah. Like, well, Lord, did you see those commentaries? But we just, we can't do that. This Read this and open your heart up and say, God, mm -hmm. you'll never find, you'll, that's another reason I don't like to try to teach you this is how it is. I want you to, I want you to see how many, how many different ways some of this can go. And sometimes you'll find two or three things that will apply right to your life today and seeing what was being thought, what was being handled, how David was acting, how God responded to him. Same God. Mm -hmm. it's the, listen to this. This is precious, I think. Tonight when you go to bed and when you're laying there after you've already given your last kiss and, and, you, and you rolled over and you're about to go to sleep and you say that little prayer or you talk to God, the same God that you're talking to and lifting mental assent and maybe loving Him or praising Him or maybe you're taking a need before Him, it's the same God we're reading about right here. The same ears and the same mouth that spoke through Nathan to David right here is listening to you mm -hmm. pray. And here's just one go further than that. You have more right to be in his presence than they did. Mm -hmm. Because the presence of Jesus Christ is in you. Messiah has come. We're on that side. David's going to meet us someday and he's going to say, tell me what it was like. Tell me what it was like to have him in you. Mm -hmm. As many times as I went and asked for his, his counsel and talked to the priest and wore the ephod, and all, what was it like just to get on your knees and mm -hmm. get a word from God? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say, well, sit down, David, and let me tell you. I don't want to go, I don't know. Hmm. You mean I could do that? We can. Yeah. But it's through devotion. That's right. It's through obedience and giving your whole heart to God. I will be his father, verse 14, and he shall be my son. That's us. Hmm. If we commit iniquity, he'll chasten us with a rod of men and the stripes of children and the children of men. But he will not depart his mercy away from us as he did with Saul. Verse 16, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Mm -hmm. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan go speak to David. See, everything we were, he everything we were hearing, God was telling Nathan to go take to David. Now, if you remember in Chronicles, when it uh, covers the same thing, David was told specifically through Nathan, there's too much blood on your hands. You can't build this temple for me. You have too much blood. You've taken too many lives and there's been too much warfare in your hands. Didn't cover it here. It's just like with, as I mentioned to you before, it's just like with the Gospels. Mm -hmm. You get some things in Matthew that you don't get in John. You get some things in Luke you don't see in, in Mark. Right. But it's a harmony. So keep that in the yeah. back of your mind. David wasn't right. That was one of the reasons God gave him for not building this, even though never lose this. There was something about David, and this is, I believe that, the, 
I believe the ones that I can see and most of the ones that are on now, the ones that we talk about this a lot, when we pull, our hearts are pulling the Holy Spirit out of the Word here. It's not a book. We're hearing the Spirit of God speak to us here. And I believe that when we do that, when it refers to David as a man after God's own heart, Mm -hmm. that's who you are. Mm -hmm. Are you the one, and I believe ever, I I just believe the best, but all of you that I can see that are online and such right now, are you among those that you'd never do anything just because you think maybe you can get away with it before God? You wouldn't do that. Mm-mm. And if you are, you're still coming out. There was a time I thought, and I would say, well, God's all right with this. He knows. He made me this way. Oh, I know better now. I'm living by His Spirit, and I don't, I don't want to grieve Him. I, it's like David. Right. I want to be after His heart. I want to do what he wants me to do. I want him to be pleased with me. I want more than anything what Jesus said uh, to, the, to the ones that come home at the end, I think is in Matthew 7, when he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Enter into the kingdom. Enter into the presence of the Lord. I want to hear well done. Mm-hmm. We all do. So yep. make your heart after God like David's was. Verse 18, then David Then went King David in, and he sat before the Lord, and he said, he just got this word from Nathan. Now imagine, here here you go again. You've got to consider these emotions if you're going to get all this. The last time David saw Nathan, they high-fived. We're going to build out a house. We're going to build it good. We're going to build out a house. We're going to build it good. And Nathan's like, "Mm, yes, and he leaves. Do whatever's in your heart, David. And David's all fired up. He's probably already... On a piece of paper, I bet he's already drawing little sketches how this is going to look and what he's going to do. He's wanting to do something good for God, and his flesh is involved, and he's got all these out. I don't put windows over here. And David, Nathan comes back and says, David, me and God have been talking all night. <laughs> no, let me rephrase that, David. God's been talking all night, and I've been listening. And now i got to tell you some things. And here's the beauty. There's not anything written here about there being any controversy or argument. David heard what Nathan said because David heard it from God. Mm -hmm. David was told no. As I said this morning in the message, we just as people, especially in our society we live in, we don't like to be told no. True. David was a man after God's own heart, and when he realized God was saying no, he said, Oh, Lord, I've got all this cedar and all this gold and all this brass and all these people. I could do... But she said, No. Okay. And so he picks up, and David goes to the Lord, and he says, listen what he says. He didn't argue with him at all or say, come on, Lord, let me just build a garage. <laughs> let me build a garage and call it God's garage. He didn't try to negotiate. He said, who am I? That's right. Humility. I yeah. say with absolute honesty, and I, I, just in case anybody ever gets the wrong impression of where I am and what I say about my walk, the more I've, I'm closer to God than I've ever been in my life, but the closer I get to Him, the more I realize how far I am. I'm a human being. I want to be nearer. The more I learn about the Almighty, the more I realize I don't know squat. Yep. But the more I do learn about Him, the more He changes me. And the more He changes me, the more I realize you are God and I am not. Mm-hmm. And if it weren't for that's Jesus, right. you couldn't even look at me. On my very best day, and that's David. Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me here to? Why in the world? And I have said that. Sally and I have talked many times. You might write down if you've got something to write with. But write down Ezekiel 36 and read especially the second half of that chapter. Because it says that God, because we were bringing shame to his name, And he was calling and calling and calling, and we just kept going around. Everybody knew we were Christians, and I was drinking, and I was going places and saying things and acting a certain way. And it's almost like God said, he's never going to change. So God arrested me and took my hardened heart out and put a soft heart in me, and he wrote his laws upon my heart. And he says in Ezekiel 36, and and I put my name in there, Terry, I didn't do this for you. Mm -hmm. I did it for my holy name Mm -hmm. that you were profaning. And it makes me want to beat myself. Mm -hmm. When I'm on my very best day, when I've led somebody to the Lord, I say, oh, Lord, you are so good. How can you possibly use this old clay vessel Mm. to do what you just did there? But I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And that's where David's coming from. You took me out of the sheep coat, just like you said. 
smelt like sheep, probably had fleas on him. <laughs> and you made me a king. Verse 19, And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? You've, you've been saying sometime you're going to do something with this house and this people. And I know David got chill bumps when he said that and when he realized it because he's thinking, I can't believe that I'm king over this people. I felt more in my place when I was running from my life from Saul even though I know I was anointed. Samuel told me when I was a boy I'm king, but I couldn't mm -hmm. understand it. I couldn't get it. I felt more at home mm -hmm. running from God and or running from Saul and doing the right thing. And now... I'm king. Mm -hmm. I'm a shepherd boy. How can right. I be a king? Exactly. And he says, What manner of man, O Lord? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. Oh, go before him and, and mm -hmm. just realize, say, Oh, God, mm -hmm. I know that I'm coming before your throne to obtain mm -hmm. mercy and grace yeah. to help me in my time of need, Hebrews 4.16. But I also know you have mercy unimaginable. You have a love for me that is way beyond my comprehension because I don't deserve to be here, Lord. Mm -hmm. I know me. I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said while I was yet a sinner, he would die for me. Yeah. And he took all mm -hmm. sin so that I could be righteousness before you. So mm -hmm. here I am. Yeah. Here I am. Grace. And then, you know, it is his grace. And do you know what? When you approach him that way, once you get on the other side and you realize, and this is each time you pray, and I don't do this near enough, but when you've prayed through like that and you finally realize and your faith builds up and you realize only by Christ I am being heard, I am being heard by the Ancient of Days. I'm in His mm, presence. Yeah. When you get there mm. and you start to praise Him, it makes God so glad. That's when He smells the savor of Christ from you. Mm -hmm. You're and, it, and that's when I like to say Jesus is over on the side when God had said wipe them out and Jesus said give us one more year Lord mm -hmm. and see if I can dig them up a little bit and put some fertilizer and see if they make fruit and if they don't dig them up but Lord give them one more year and now we've made it into the presence we've prayed through on our knees and suddenly we know God's hearing us and we're praying for that loved one or we're praying against these spirits of darkness coming against our kids or we're praying and we're on our knees and we know we broke through and God God has heard us and we know we've heard, and we start to worship him it's almost like Jesus looks over at his father and goes <laughs> I told you daddy yep. it was right your plan worked just like we said mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. Amen. Oh, the world will change when a handful of us get our hearts wrapped around this yeah. and start to walk in it. I want it more than anything in the world. Yeah. But I want it. God, God wants it to be a family thing, I think, and a body. Yes. Uh, we're going to have to do it together. Yeah. 21, for thy word's sake, for thy word's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them. Listen to the humility in this, mm -hmm. this prayer David's praying. For thy word's sake. And when you talk about God's word, that's talking about Jesus. That's that Jesus was all the way back through all of this. The yes. word of God, the word spoke and everything came into being. By our words we're justified. By our words we're condemned. The words of God, God's word, is the essence of Jesus himself. Rome, uh, Revelation 19, 13. His name is the mm. word of God. Mm. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the <laughs> word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Mm -hmm. For thy word's sake. They didn't know his name yet. But for, for your Messiah's sake. And according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things mm. to make thy servant know them. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God. For there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Right. That You ought to mark that up. Mm -hmm. I'm going and I'm going to be praying some of this. This is how to pray. And when we can, these are the words that you want to be saying when you're driving down the road. Yeah. Get something Worship. like this. Start mm. using your mouth to say these kind of words. Yeah. This is your keys. This is yes. your weapons. That's this right. is the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pulling mm. down strongholds. We need to get that, that 
singing them old hillbilly songs and telling them funny jokes and, and, and quoting this, that, and the other, and the politicians' things. Get that out of your mouth. Get that out and start saying, Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we've heard with our ears. Amen. And when you start using your mouth more like that, then when you come before the throne of grace and you say, Lord, show me how to bind these spirits over here that are coming against my kids. Show me how to cut off this spirit of alcohol and drug that's coming across our city. Show me how to bind up these strongholds and break down these gates. Your words start speaking. And sometimes you'll find yourself, I have done this, and I'm going to tell you, it felt silly the first time, but the time I was finished, I was amped up. But go outside by yourself sometime and just start <laughs> speaking the Word of God into the sky. Mm, amen. And start speaking to the principalities and the powers yeah. and say, away from this house. Yep. This house says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right. We serve the Most High God. And then you start praying these things and the demons, you can almost sense yep. them leaving. Yep. And if it's too cold to go outside, do go it in anyways. your house. Oh, no, okay. no. <laughs> you can go throughout your house. You can. Yeah. You remember War Room. Yes. I just shared that with somebody tonight. Get back in that way of thinking. Yes. Remember, she went through the house and she said, devil, she you're did. done here. Yes. You're done. But those <laughs> words are weak yeah. and worthless and meaningless if you use that same mouth to sing all mm. these things that aren't to God and you speak all these things that have nothing because you dilute them. Every word, Jesus mm. said, man will give account for every word spoken. Doesn't say you're going to be punished for everything you say that wasn't about him. You give an account. If you're counting on your balances, you got positives and negatives, and, and you want to come out with more positives and negatives at the end. Get way more, and the more you have, the stronger you are. So start using your mouth for what it was meant to be. Right. Death and life. And the right there in the power of the, of the tongue. It's the keys to the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, I've told you this was full. There is no way we're getting into chapter 8. <laughs> but eight's another good one. Yes. One more time, 22. <laughs> Wherefore thou art great, O Lord. O Lord God. For there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible. That's awesome. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Terrible, though, is a, I like it used awesome. there in the King James because it reminds us to fear the Lord. True. There is terror in the presence of God. Mm. And when we realize that, we want to walk in the Spirit because mm. you don't want to be in front of God in the flesh. Right. Reverence. Reverence yes. and fear. A fear of who. Yeah. And then when you start to come in the Spirit, you start to realize why Paul said boldly mm. before the Not Paul, the whoever wrote Hebrews. You can boldly go in the Spirit. You don't go boldly anywhere in the flesh and around God. That's right. For thy land before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt and from the nations and their gods. You can read that same. That's a long verse, verse 23. But that can right there, that can be about us mm -hmm. Christians, mm -hmm. the children of God. We're not a replacement for God's people, for God's Israel, but we are his bride. We are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have, it says that we are made, we are made privy to the same covenant of Abraham. And people... People shortchange themselves, and sometimes they get rewarded for it, saying, "Well, because I take the, I claim the promises of Abraham, um, I claim jets and money and cash and cattle, and they get a lot of those things." What a mm. shortchange they've fallen under! Yes. Look at what they look at there. They've got they've got a, a net worth of forty two million dollars, and mm. they don't know him the way mm. we can know him and be plug broke. Mm. That's and just, those riches have them. Actually. Those riches have them, and those riches have an expiration date on yes. them. Yes. <laughs> because yeah. we you will. You can't take it with you. No, because eventually you're going to fulfill your days. You remember That's that right. verse we read yeah. a while ago? Exactly. When I fulfill my days, I want all the riches I've got to just slide <laughs> right on in with me. Mm -hmm. So that's the. But we are the nation in the earth. As I said this morning in, in the message at the church, we are the salt of. Jesus said to us, You're the salt. Yes, we're the salt. You're of my the people. Earth. You're the light in this darkness. Mm -hmm. Let it shine. Amen. Doesn't matter what anybody says about you. Let them laugh at you and call you an old Christian. Before mm -hmm. long, if you just keep letting that roll off of you, you'll start to come into position. And you'll start yeah. to come into shape. And God will rise you up. And you will be light in the darkness. That's what we want to be. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. 24. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever. And thou, Lord, art become their God. That's us mm. too. 
right there because he did it with Jesus Christ himself. He could say 24, For God, you have confirmed to yourself thy people, the children of yours, the children mm -hmm. of God, the Christians. We are a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. You're our God. Verse 25, And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, now, Lord, what you told Nathan about me and such as that, and concerning this house, establish it forever, as thou hast said. Mm. You know what he was saying right there? Mm. If Beverly were watching, she could play. It says, have thine own <laughs> way, Lord. Yes, yes. It's not about, okay, Lord, I, I had a great idea. Lord, I'm going to build mm. you a big, beautiful temple. But right now, why don't you just build your people? Yeah. Build your house. Yeah. You remember that old Stuart Hamlin song, This Old House? That's, that's mm -hmm. our bodies. We are the temple of the living God now. And that's what he was talking ultimately about right here. Yeah. And David has submitted. Forget the mm -hmm. house I was going to build out of cedar. Yep. You build your house, Lord, and do as thou hast said. Yes. And let thy name. You see, mm -hmm. otherwise it would have been, look at this beautiful temple mm -hmm. that, that David, David built. built. Because, see, even now it's known as Solomon's Temple yep. and Herod's Temple. Mm. And God says, the, the, the house I'm building, it'll be my name. Mm -hmm. It'll be my name. I yep. must decrease, he must increase. Mm. And let thy name be magnified mm. forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Therefore hath, the, hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. I'm telling you, go back and read that as much as you want to. Just mark it up and read it for every day for a while. That's a prayer. Mm -hmm. And I love how sometimes his passion, he didn't say, Oh, Lord, thank you. For the, oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord God most high. Mm -hmm. hmm. Sometimes when I pray, you'll notice when Jesus started, to, when he taught us how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, just And I think sometimes that was, let's just keep it real specific so the devil and any spirits that are listening know specifically who you're talking to. They're going to know when I'm praying. Oh, Lord God most high, redeemer of my soul. What's Jesus' name to me? Jesus' name is the one that took me out of the bottle. What's his name? He's the one that took my old filthy mind and pornographic images. He took them out of me. and He's the one that set me free. He broke the chains off of me. And that's who Hallelujah. I pray me to. Too. And me when too. I pray something like like, amen. Yeah. When you pray something like that, every devil in hell knows exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And they tremble. That's right. They tremble right. at him. Can I, can I share something real mm -hmm. quick? Um, you know, he's talking about, um, you know, the, the house that, that David was going to build. Well, we are God's house. Mm -hmm. We are the temple now. It's That's not, right. you know, it's not about the, the temple. Well, back here is about the um, the temple that was being built. But we are the temple of God, and we, That's right. you know, and so He lives in us. And that's why we're told, that, like Paul was saying in First um, Corinthians six, I believe it was, he was talking about fornication. And such he said, should I take? the body of Christ and join it with mm. a prostitute? Right. God forbid. We don't exactly. have the right to do these things well, with this body. Lives in us. Whether it's putting poison in us, whether it's drinking or taking drugs or smoking or whatever. Yeah. And some of those are less well, we're not gonna go to hell for that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not mm. saying that. I'm talking about having a heart after God and say, Lord mm. I don't need to do this anymore. Hmm. I, 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 I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't really think it's a sin, but this isn't my body. Do you mind if I do this or should I be doing this? Yeah. This is your body. This is where the Holy Spirit dwells. Right. And I'll He'll show you. We're supposed to be His righteousness, that's, right? That's right. We're yeah. the example of it. We're, yeah. we're, we're the only way people can see it. Right. That's the way He set it up. Yeah. Where are you? I think 28. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll say 27. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, has revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee a house. Yeah, we read this. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. 28 and 29. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. You, I come wanting to build you a house got all excited about it. The prophet goes home and you tell him to come back and tell me, mm -hmm. I ain't building you nothing. You're building something through me. Mm -hmm. He was humbled. He was set on his yes. hackles. He thought, wow, 
Mm. I was going to do something for you, and you just blew me away wanting to do this for me. Right. Therefore, now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant. He talking about his children and his grandchildren and his great and his old lineage, that it may continue forever before thee, mm. for thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it, and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Wow. Amen. <laughs> and now I won't turn to it because it would take too long and we need to finish. But remember Second Corinthians ten four. Second Corinthians ten four, the weapons mm. of our warfare aren't carnal. David was going to use his hands and he was going to do something good for God and God came word back and said, don't worry about that. I'm building something that you won't even see your whole lifetime. Read Hebrews 11. <laughs> All those men died not seeing the promise, right. but they died for it, some of them. Some of yes. them were put to death for it knowing they believed so much. Believe in what God's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. Rise up and become a spirit person because you are the salt of the earth. Mm. You are the light of the world. And God has something specific He wants to do through Amen. you tomorrow. He yes. wants to light the darkness around you tomorrow and use you to do it. Amen. 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 All right, it's 7 o'clock. Let's wow. say a prayer. Wow. Lord, thank you for this holy word you've given us. Amen. Thank you for the, the I don't know words to describe it. This, it's history on paper. But Lord, as we read it, we don't read it as a historian. Mm -hmm. We read it as a family member. Lord, if we were reading a diary of 200, 300 years ago of some of our ancestors, we would be wondering, what were they thinking? What did they do? What were their intentions? And Lord, you've given us that strangely with people from 3,000 years ago because they are our people. Yeah. And you are our God. Show each one listening, Lord, everybody that's been a part of this tonight, I pray that as they mm -hmm. sleep and as they pray to you before we go to bed tonight, let us realize what we have. Yeah. Let us realize the value of this eternal gift that you've put within us mm -hmm. so that we would live to your glory until our days be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Amen. you know, Terry, because of Jesus, that we're able to go boldly before God. That's the only we way. We couldn't do it before. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you get zapped right back yeah. out of there if you even tried. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. All right. Hope to see you guys at 7.30 in the morning for yes. a Zoom meeting Zoom? if you can make it. Yeah. Ashley, it's good to see you it's again. It's good to see you, Ashley. Eddie and Vicki, thanks for being yes. on here. We like to see you yes. guys. And See you, Eddie. <laughs> Bye, Eddie. Um, and, and Wednesday night, don't forget, at 6 o'clock, we'll have Bible study and we'll be in what? Second, no, Galatians. Yeah. Yes, we're in Galatians. Galatians so that's two or very three. good. See y'all yeah. later. Bye-bye. God bless y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.